Hey, I'm Brian Vance, SportbikeTrackYear.com. Today we're going to break down the all-new Alpine Stars Missile Ignition Tech Air Compatible Race Suit. Okay, the Missile Ignition One-Piece Race Suit retails for $10.99 as of the time we're shooting this video. Please understand, we don't update videos for price changes, only if the product itself has been redesigned. Let's dive right into sizing. This is a Tech Air compatible garment, so we're going to show you how this fits me with and without the airbag installed in the suit. Currently, I do have the Tech Air race vest inside the suit. If you guys haven't already picked up, you come to the site and look at the stuff we have for the Tech Air race. We all ride in it. I've crashed in it, had a deployment. My son's crashed in it, had a deployment. And I gotta tell you, it is money well spent. Sales pitch over there. I'm five feet, 11 inches tall, 197 pounds, 33 inch waist. I'm at a 54 Euro in the Alpine Stars Missile Ignition One Piece race suit. You can see the way it fits with just a back protector in it or with the airbag vest installed. The airbag vest definitely takes up some volume. I would be a 54 with or without the airbag. And for most people, you would wear the same size race suit, whether you choose to ride with the bag or not. The only time that would be different is if let's say you're literally right at the tippy top of a 54, you're maxing that thing out with just a back protector. There's no additional space left. For a rider like that, you would need to be perhaps in the size just above to accommodate the addition of the airbag because it does take up a little bit more volume. Please note, with the previous version of the missile, I was a 56 Euro. Alpine Stars has dramatically changed the race suit cut and sizing. We've seen it first in the GP Pro V2. Now we're seeing it with the missile ignition and also the all-new GP Tech V3 suit. I've ridden in the previous missile, my son has a missile, and I also own a GP Tech V2. I can clearly feel and experience the difference in the cut. They've done some body mapping, right, and just really worked on the overall fit of the suit. And one of the things that you're gonna notice is, it's not just that it's cut bigger everywhere. They didn't just take a 56 missile and relabel it a 54. They changed the way that the suit was cut. And one of the spots I want to point out right now is, look at the butt. That's a big old saggy butt, right? Well, when you get down into position, you notice how that just kind of fills up. And this is where you're riding the bike. When you're in this position, you are on the motorcycle. You're never really standing up in it. So instead of just asking this stretch panel to manage all of that movement, they've actually cut the suit now so that it's made to be in that position. It just simply makes it easier to ride and move around in the suit. I think it's a big leap forward, right? You can even see the pre-curve in the arms, the pre-curve that's in the legs before the motion panel. These are all done simply to make the experience while on the bike better. I think it's a move forward. I'm probably gonna keep the GP Tech V3 that we're doing the video on, because it's blue and it's awesome and riding it so I'll be able to give some ride review feedback pretty quickly as well on the new fit pattern. From that let's talk features and benefits with our missile and as always we're going to have a second part of this video we're going to break this thing down all the way. 1.3 mil cowhide leather. Okay this stuff is durable same as the previous version my kid crashed in it a couple of times it held up great. I think this suit it provides a tremendous value. Armor that it comes with CE certified armor in the elbow form and shoulder. Elbow slider is replaceable. If you can corner low enough to drag that thing on the ground, you can get a replacement puck. Integrated shoulder slider. There's CE certified armor in the hips, both sides right on the hot spot. It's also adjustable. We'll show you that in the second part of the video. That's a very nice value add. CE certified armor in the knee and shin, replaceable sport knee slider. To be fair, these knee sliders, if you're a knee dragger, you're going to blow through the sport set rather quickly. Their GP stuff handles and GP Pro stuff holds up a whole heck of a lot better. The sports are just going to get you out there and get you rolling, right? More for riders who aren't doing any heavy knee dragging. I just want to be you know, up front with you there. There is the integrated 
knee cup here. All the stretch fabric they use is that four-way stretch, very comfortable. Here's your Tech Air LEDs. I have my bag in now, I just don't have it turned on. I actually need to send it out for a repack because it just went off. Perforation here. All this stretch fabric, like I said earlier, is going to flow air. Segmented perf here. Various spots on the back of the suit, you'll see some perforation as well. The race hump is ventilated and there are perforations top and bottom. That just allows for an exchange of heat energy. Not really like a big air conditioner driving in there, but it does help to keep the rider cooler and more comfortable. I really like this suit. I think this one's a tough one to beat at that $10.99 price point. It's a bummer that it went up hundred bucks compared to the previous version, but I will say that the new fit pattern is a big benefit. If you like what you see so far, you want more detail, stay tuned for the second part. Okay, I'm gonna show you now how to install the Tech Air Race into the missile ignition suit. First thing I noticed here with this sample they sent me is the power cord, right? The LED cord was not through the pass-through here, so I'm gonna look for that. If you happen to have the same situation on your suit, it's pretty easy to remedy. Just zip the liner open on the left side. Inside the suit here, look for the cable. There it is right there. Odds are most riders would not have to do this just in the case of the sample that came across. The harness was not passed through. I got it through the pass through and now we'll be ready to install this. This process is relatively simple and if you're going to be a Tech Air owner, you want to familiarize yourself with this. And I'd recommend, you know, taking your time, do it a couple of times, and make sure you get it installed just right. This installs using Velcro patches that are located on the Tech Air Race Vest. There are corresponding patches in the sleeve of the suit as well as the base of the neck. You can see each sleeve has one that's kind of rectangular shaped here. That's going to be in the middle of the bicep area. And then it has a round one up here at the top of the shoulder. You need to expose the Velcro panel at the base of the neck by releasing the Velcro on the inner liner of the suit, folding this flap up, this will expose the second panel that you will then reattach the liner to like so, folding that flap over so we can attach our Tech Air Race vest to it. There are also on either sides of the breast yellow colored zippers that zip to the corresponding zippers on our Tech Air Race vest. First thing I like to do and I recommend too that you have the vest turned off anytime you're removing it, installing it, things like that. Just make sure you have the switch on the back of the vest turned off. I like to slide it down inside the race suit to begin with. And then I'll grab the inside liner of the suit from one of the arms. I'm going to start here with the left arm. I like to turn it inside out as much as I can. And I hope we're able to give you a pretty clear line of sight here. Please understand it's kind of challenging. To do that, now let's get that rectangular Velcro patch on the sleeve of the Tech Air Race Vest. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to kind of go quick here and just attach these. When I'm doing this for a suit that I'm going to be riding in, I really take my time and I make sure everything is lined up just right. What I found for my suit and Max's suit is that it really has an impact on comfort, how it feels once you're in the suit. The better job you do getting it installed, the more accurate job you do, the better it's going to feel when you're riding in it. Now we'll go to the other sleeve. Same thing. We've got multiple videos out there now covering the Tech Air Race. We have had, uh, my son and I, Max, we both had deployments on track with crashes. You know, crashing is something, you know, you hope you never do, but there's a reason why we wear all this protection because Sometimes shit happens. And I have to tell you, I really, truly believe it makes all the difference in the world. And especially with the crash that I had, I think it was the difference between being injured and not being injured. Okay, now, back here at the base of the neck, I want you to pay attention to the height of this. That is a lot bigger than the panel of Velcro that's on the back of the Tech Air Race Vest. 
The reason it's like that is that allows you to adjust the height, basically where this thing is going to ride in the suit. That's something that as an individual you need to experiment with to make sure that you have it in the position that is most appropriate for you and your body type. For the purpose of this video, I am literally just going to toss that bad boy in there and call it good. Okay, now, you could at this moment go ahead and plug in the harness, right? So we'll go ahead and do that. You can also get it all zipped up and pull the tail of this thing out and get the harness plugged in if you prefer to do it that way. Let's go ahead and get the harness plugged in to the gray port, like so. I typically still will not turn it on. I usually reach behind it when it's in the suit. Up is on, down is off. So if you remember that, it's easy to switch on and off once it's inside the suit. Go ahead and expose these zips. Zip both sides of the airbag in. And you are now tech air ready. Okay, here we go, inside out, the all new missile ignition suit. Fully removable liner. If you want to wash this, mild detergent, line dry it. Do not throw this in the dryer. You can see that they have retained the uh, waterproof pocket inside the suit. Armor that is included. CE certified soft shell armor. Knee and shin, large coverage area there. Elbow and form. This is good stuff, race level stuff, as well as the shoulder. Here is the nuclear armor for the hip. You're going to find this on both sides of the suit. It is adjustable. There's a little patch in there. You can move this around. We'll show you guys that later. It's important to note that as this stuff warms, it becomes much more moldable, flexible, and comfortable. So in its initial state, you'll find, man, this is kind of like rigid, right? And, and it feel, you can kind of notice it in the suit. As soon as this warms up, that all disappears. It becomes nearly invisible. Focusing on the shell of the suit itself. Tons of perforation up here in the upper torso. Great airflow of this. That is very similar to what we saw with the previous version. What they have changed with this is the cut of the suit, right? The cut of the suit is improved. I think they moved that forward. They made that better. To deal with airbag deployment, there are some additional stretch panels found in the suit. That's a bonus if you're going to use the airbag, and it's also a bonus if you're not going to because it allows the suit to move even better on the rider. Got your motion panel here in the elbow and forearm. If you can corner as low as Mark Marquez, there is a replaceable elbow slider. Here's your Tech Air LEDs, locking zips here at the cuff. Four-way stretch fabric spans all the way from the cuff up into the chest area of the suit. And you'll see, too, that they've carried it over into the underarm, the back of the arm. And that is out of the impact zone. That is to increase comfort and mobility for the rider in this suit, as well as manage airbag deployments integrated shoulder slider that works in conjunction with the shoulder armor to protect the shoulder area. Leather motion panel all the way from the top of the shoulder down to the waist of the suit. It stops about an inch and a half short of the motion panel. It spans across the waist. Four-way stretch fabric, a large patch of that here at the base of the neck. That's going to expand and contract, move with the rider, and also if you have an airbag deployment, this is one of the spots where it's going to allow the airbag to fill. We have a hollow race hump with perforations at the top. This is to allow for an exchange of air, right? Heat energy is able to move out, cooler air move in, keeps the rider cool and comfortable. You see some additional perforations down here in the suit at the base of that perforated race hump. Front of the suit, you'll see right up here at the very top too, there is a small stretch fabric panel that helps to increase comfort and manage airbag deployments. Generous stretch fabric is used all up here and it comes up into the hip area, down through the crotch, through the back of the legs. If you're large in the calf areas, for example, my son Max has got pretty big calves, they have expansion panels here that allow you to get another inch and a half or so right at that peak where the calf kind of diamonds up. If you need that, it's there, just simply zip it open. Focusing on the knee of the suit, you'll see, look at all that pre-curve, and this is where they change the fit of the suit. Tons of pre-curve, still have a motion panel above the knee because there's a lot of motion here. There is your slider that works in conjunction with the knee armor and shin armor that's inside the suit. Comes re replaceable sport knee pucks. 
Got a little fabric stretch panel down here at the base of the suit. Flipping it over. There's a better look at all the stretch paneling on the back side. That's where the mobility and comfort comes from. Multiple layers of leather in the seat here. Integrated tailbone protector. Some segmented perf here in the seat area to help keep the rider cool and comfortable. You can see from the back side what all the stretch fabric on the suit looks like in the leg area. Internally in the suit, the shoulder armor is in a floating pocket. They do that, it allows the armor to move around and the cup of the armor will kind of find your shoulder. It increases comfort and mobility riding experience for the rider. You'll find pockets built out of the same fabric material that are going to hold your elbow and forearm armor down here. Those will add a measure of strength, tear and abrasion resistance as well. Not quite as much as a layer of leather, but it does enhance the protection to some degree as well. If you want to remove the race hump, there's a Velcro panel right here you can release and remove that from the suit. You can see how it's perforated like so. Inside the suit, in the seat, this is one of the primary impact and abrasion zones right here. Here is the panel of Velcro that attaches the hip armor to the suit. You can see there is enough surface area here to adjust that and really dial it in to best suit your body type. This drop seat, this floating panel of leather in the seat, helps manage abrasion in that area, okay? Most crashes, if you do it right, you're going to be sliding on your back, right? So you're going to have tons of abrasion and tear resistance in that area. Closer look at that integrated tailbone protector that's not CE certified, but it does add a certain measure of protection in that area. Quick look inside the leg of the suit. You can see the pocket is right here for the knee and shin armor. Okay, now let's talk about the things I like about the missile and the things that I dislike. We'll start off with the dislike. It's a pretty short list. This waterproof pocket, I just don't understand the need for it. I'm sure there's a great reason for it. You know, I just, I don't really understand the need for it. It just adds a little bit of bulk in there. Really not a big deal at the end of the day. They had to add $100 to the price point. I'm sure there's many, many business reasons for that. You know, tariffs and all this stuff have changed for sure, and that does impact the price of products. So it's a bummer to see the suit go up by $100. With all that said, this is still a tremendous value. This suit's so good that this is what I had my son Max riding in the 2019 season was the original version of the missile suit. It crashes really well. He's ridden in it a ton. It's very mobile, very comfortable, and it's super affordable. You're really getting a ton of suit for your money here, even though it's went up $100. The fact that it accepts their airbag system and for now $22.50, you're in a fully airbag protected race suit, a quality race suit, 1.3 millimeter cowhide, right? Quality stuff. This is a solid value. I really like this suit. And they also moved it forward by improving the fit pattern of the suit. This version simply fits a little better than the predecessor.